Hey you guys from New Plastic and after two weeks of trying to figure out how to get the right look, I can finally share with you the procedural Cheetos look. Before we start, I made a new pack of procedural snacks, 21 different famous snacks we all know and love, potato chips, Doritos, pretzels, Cheetos and more, different flavors, all 100% procedural, no image maps used, including simple snacks models for both Octane and Redshift. If you feel like you need them, feel free to buy them from my Gumroad, it's a great way to help yourself and to support the channel. Channel. Another way to support the channel is by buying prints or pins that I made. The prints are of images I made in videos on the channel like the realistic Obey logo or the 80 year old Mario. Very affordable matte prints that look and feel great. That's on my other Gumroad. I'll leave all the links in the description below. And of course consider supporting on Patreon where you can get these project files, free products and other cool perks but mostly help me make more and better content for y'all. Follow me on Instagram at ojang or the channel at brand new plastic. And you know, subscribe, just subscribe. Let's go. So I'll very quickly model a Cheetos model. I don't want to linger on this part too much, but I still want you to see this. I'll just draw a very simple spline shape, center the axis, and I'll add a cube so I know what scale I'm working with. Let's make the cube around five centimeter tall and now I can scale the spline to fit that height. And I know this model fits a real world scale. I'll change interpolation mode to uniform so that when I add a displacement deformer, it will deform it in a uniform way. Just adjust scale and strength to something like this. Cool, let's add the spline to a volume builder, lower the resolution to like 0.01 because this is a pretty small scale model and change the spline radius to around 0.2 and up the density to like 20 or so. Let's add a random field, change space to objects below, change radius to 0.09 scale down the noise scale and play with the remapping you can play around here it's not gonna make a huge difference just don't go too extreme with the sliders so you don't lose the noise completely let's up the surface threshold by a tiny tiny bit i'm going up 0.01 at a time because this is super sensitive okay something like 0.59 let's add a smooth layer mm, bring down the contrast on the noise and up the smoothing Let's actually up the spline radius and now we can control the radius scale along the spline with this curve here. I'll just lower the resolution for a second and we can kind of shape the spline making it thinner at the bottom and add some variance along it, you know, like a Cheetos. Let's up the resolution and maybe we can do 0.02 so the surface distortion isn't as sharp. Yeah, this looks right. Let's put it in a volume measure, duplicate this displacement deformer and put it above the volume builder layer so it displaces the mesh and play around with the scale and strength to add just another subtle layer of distortion. I choked the low and high clip on the noise to get these like clipped surfaces which I like and now the cool thing is that I can select both of these displacement deformers and change the seed on the noise to instantly get variations on the look. Lastly I'll add this whole thing to a null and add a smooth deformer just to soften everything and I'll just remesh the whole thing and lower the mesh density to around 5% so I can have a nice looking and much lower poly mesh which I can then start texturing and getting additional detail using the displacement in the material. Cool, let's just quickly change this to a square frame and in the octane settings I'll bring down the ray epsilon to the lowest value just so we can get better details with all the displacement and subsurface scattering. I'll turn on aces and let's add an HDRI. Mm, we can't see anything. I guess the live viewer wasn't turned on. Okay, I like this HDRI, make it kind of a rim light. Then I'll duplicate the sky object, change the image to RGB spectrum, change type to visible environment. And now we only see the RGB spectrum, but we get the lighting from the HDRI underneath. Let's add a key light. And okay, let's just start texturing. Add a universal material, change BRDF mode to GGX. Let's add a noise and add a XYZ to UVW projection node. And let's duplicate this noise with a UVW transform node. Let's add a composite node with three layers. Plug the noise to layer one and the UVW node to layer two. Let's duplicate this noise and plug the whole thing to the albedo channel so we can solo it. Let's unplug the top two layers and scale down the first noise to around 0.25. Let's up the octaves a tiny bit and up the contrast a bit. 
Okay, let's plug the second layer and scale this one down to around uh, 0.27. And let's change the blend mode to exclusion. So we're getting this complex but subtle blending of the two noises. Maybe add a gradient node to the second layer and invert it. Choke in the blacks a bit. Let's plug in the third layer, scale it way down like around 0.06. Change type to chips. And actually let's stretch it down the y-axis by a bit. Add a gradient node and choke in the whites. And change blend mode to darken. Now let's add this first noise through a UVW transform node to the mask of the third layer and scale it down a bit. So we're breaking the uniformity of the chips noise. Cool. Now we're gonna keep this whole composite system like this and plug it into a new composite system. Where is it? It's missing. Huh. Mm, maybe just duplicate this one. Now, if you get this bug where a node is missing from the list, just close the node window and open it back up and the node will appear on the list again. Okay, add two layers, plug the first composite system to the first layer through a gradient node, make the blacks like dark gray, and add a noise to the second layer. Let's solo this, scale the noise way, way down, around 0.006. So it looks kind of like this. Change type to circular, up the octaves to get more detail, up the gamma so we choke the whites and up the contrast a bit. Let's change blend mode to vivid light. So we get this really harsh blend between them and it looks pretty bad now but if I'll plug this UVW transform node to its mask with a gradient node and make the white around 15% gray and the blacks around 5% gray. So you can see now we're kind of getting a better blend. You can honestly barely see the circular noise, but trust me, you'll see its effects in the displacement. So let's add a displacement node, change type to vertex, height to around 0.2, mid level to 0.5, turn on auto bump and up the subdivision levels to three, but we'll probably go higher later. And let's plug in the second composite node and see how we're looking. Okay, nice, subtle and rich displacement. It's a bit hard to see all the details, so let's add some color. Let's turn on transmission all the way up. Make sure transmission type is set to diffuse. Add a random walk medium. Plug the first composite system into a gradient node and plug that into a mix node. Cool, let's bring another noise in. Make it really, really small so we get a fine noise and plug it into both layers of the mix node through gradient nodes. Plug the mix node into the medium albedo channel and let's solo it. In case you don't know, the black areas in the mix amount will expose layer 1 and the whites will expose layer 2. And if we look at the mix amount gradient, we know that the same system is plugged into the displacement channel, so all the black areas are indented and the white areas are extruded. If we look at a Cheetos, we can see that for the most part, all the extruded areas have that orange powder on them, since that powder sticks less to the crevices which means we want the black areas to have this yellow color and the white areas to have that orange color so let's make layer one gradient a mix of bright yellow and a very dull light orange and you can pause the video to see all the actual color details i usually think colors are fine to interpret for yourself but cheetos does have very very distinct colors so if you can't figure out the right colors just pause and look at my numbers and the gradient of layer two will make this mix of bright and vibrant oranges going from slightly darker to slightly brighter, just to add a bit more subtle detail. But as you can see, the majority of the gradient is the middle kind of bright orange. And actually, let's change the noise type to Perlin, add a bunch of details and adjust the gamma till we see some of the darker and brighter oranges, but mostly the main mid orange. Okay, something like this should be fine. We'll come back to adjust it further, but for now let's add a color correction node in case we want to adjust the whole thing quickly. And we're looking very white. Let's add an RGB spectrum to the radius and make it this very, very bright yellow. Let's also change the bias to 1 in the medium node and up the density to 200. 
and we're still way too bright. So what I want to do is plug the color mix node into the transmission channel through a color correction node. And immediately we're getting a very orangey transmission, which not only lowers the transmission amount since it's not at 100% anymore, but it colors it these very vivid orange colors. And it is a bit too strong, so I'll increase the saturation by a tiny bit, but I'll reduce the gamma to around 0.4. So now the transmission color is much brighter and basically more transmissive while still keeping a vivid color. Okay, what I'm missing now is a stronger difference between the yellow and the orange parts. So let's go to the gradient of the mix amount and start choking the notches. If we bring the white notch in, we're increasing the amount of orange. And if we bring the black notch in, we're increasing the amount of yellow. Okay, nice. We're actually finally getting something that starts to feel like Cheetos. And we can even add a color correction to before the gradient. And we can up or down the gamma to quickly change the ratio between the yellow and the orange. Okay, let's up the saturation on the albedo color correction. And actually, I'll also up the saturation in the Octane Settings Camera Imager tab. I can try to increase the saturation within the material itself, but because we're dealing with subsurface scattering, colors can get easily distorted and hard to nail if we get too extreme with them. So upping the overall saturation in the settings or in post works great. Okay, let's work on the specular channels. Let's plug this noise here into a UVW transform, plug that into a gradient node, and plug that into the specular channel. Let's choke in the black so we're getting these white specks and actually scale the UVW down. So basically we're getting these tiny specks of shininess. Now let's plug the UVW into another gradient, invert the gradient, plug it into the roughness channel, choke the whites in a bit, and let's change the white to kind of a mid gray and the blacks to a dark gray. Now on top of that, let's plug the second composite system into the coating channel. So we're adding another layer of shininess, which makes it more shiny on the extruded orange parts and less shiny in the yellow crevices, which is actually the opposite of what I want. So let's reverse the gradient, choke in the whites a bit and make them a bright gray so they aren't that strong. And let's add some roughness. Cool. It's subtle, but after many, 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 many experiments, this gave me the best looking results. You can still play with it. Honestly, I'll probably even keep playing with the specular channel after I'm done. Let's up the subdivision levels on the displacement to four. And yeah, I mean, dude, this looks really, really good. Let's up the exposure. And yeah, I think everything looks good. Let's give her a little spin. Add a backlight to see how the SSS feels. Testing different light setups is really important when you're trying to develop a realistic material. Yeah, looks fucking sick. Oh man, it took me so long to get this right, but I think I might have finally done it. And just for fun, we can turn it into a flaming hot Cheetos by making a few changes. Let's start by adding a color correction node to layer two of the mix node, which is the orange layer. And let's bring down the hue till we get this super vibrant red color. And we can do the same on the overall color correction albedo. And usually the Flaming Hot Cheetos seems to have much more powder on it. So I'll bring down some of the blacks on the mix amount gradient to expose more of the red parts. And let's also make the radius color slightly more red. And the transmission channel as well. We can bring down the medium density slightly lower the gamma on the albedo color correction to make it a bit brighter. Mm, okay, the red seems a bit too uniform and flat, so let's plug this composite system to a UVW transform and plug that into the brightness channel of this color correction node through a gradient node. And if we scale it down, you can see we're adding darker variations to the red color and maybe that's too strong. So let's make the black more like a mid gray. And this looks cool, a bit too dark. Let's choke the whites of the brightness gradient. Yeah, so we're just adding very subtle variations. Okay, up the brightness of the mix amount, so we spread the red out even more. And maybe add a subtle orange notch to the yellow gradient. Nice, I mean you can adjust it to your likings to add more or less red. Let's actually expose more of the blacks on this chips noise gradient to open up the overall crevices a bit more. Cool. And lastly, let's add the coating layer gradient to an add node and add this specs UVW node to layer one and plug that into the coating channel. So if we solo this, you can see we're adding more coating specs. And if we make the gradient darker, we see the specs a bit more. 
which kind of fakes these tiny specks of granules of like salt or sugar or something on the powder. And we can make it even stronger by upping the coating IOR. And maybe now we can lower the main specular channel brightness just a bit. Maybe choke in the whites on the coating specs way, way more to make them stick out more. And actually I ended up going back to this and just to add more detail to the powder part, I plugged the mix amount color correction to an add node, then plugged this fine noise to the first layer through a UVW transform and a gradient node. And now I can scale it however I want and basically I'm adding white specks to the mix amount which means I'm adding red specks over the yellow Cheetos parts. You can do that with the regular cheese Cheetos as well, but for some reason the red powder on hot Cheetos seems to be sticking all over more than the orange cheese powder. I can maybe make it less magenta, but yeah, you can see how we're adding red specks wherever the yellow parts are. And we can expose more or less of the specks with the gradient node, and even more, we can plug the UVW into another gradient node and plug that into the color correction brightness. So now now we're removing red specks from the red parts while adding red specks to the yellow parts. And we can control the strength of the red powder by changing the white value of this last gradient node here. So yeah, by playing around with all these gradients you can achieve kind of different ratios of red and yellow. Cool. I think we're done. Making Cheetos without getting our hands dirty. Honestly, now that I'm done with the actual tutorial, it just seems like another tutorial, not any different from any other procedural videos I made. I mean, I think I've actually shared way more complex materials before, but it's not really about the final complexity of the material, as it is about the amount of different attempts I've had until I settled on something that felt right. I've tried ones that were way more complex than this, and ones that only had a few nodes, and they all looked fine, but I don't know. I would always wake up the next day and look at it and I'll be like, nah, this ain't it and just scratch it and start from scratch. But yeah, I'm happy I finally found one that I'm comfortable sharing. My material pack will have um, another version that's a bit more complex of the Cheetos look. Um, so you can kind of choose whichever you want. Next, I'll show you how to do this in Redshift for all you Redshifters because yeah, that's how we're going to do it from now on. Octane and Redshift. And I can already tell you it's not going to be a carbon copy of this one. It's going to look slightly different. It's going to be built very differently. It's funny how different every engine is and really requires a different approach to node stacking. All right, check out the procedural snack pack on my Gumroad. Check out the prints and pins on my other Gumroad. Consider supporting on Patreon and a dangerously cheesy thumbs up to my patrons and members. Yusuf Ismail, Inengong, Guillaume Lopez, Dave Toro, Marie Robbins, Svoyas Chari, Eric Hu, Daniel Larry, Minky Kim, Hader, Leo, Peter Rodiger, Shin Yunji, Chris Hyde, Alda Boyd, Fenrong Fenrong, Katie Royal, Derek Fredrickson, Biko Sun, Ruby Nine, Lucas Renche, Tell Me More, Jaskirat Pandrath, Bori, Jin Kwan Wu, Domestic God in the House, Toby T, Adam Trexler, Everyday Swiss, General Zods, Kevin Baldiu, Simon Sturm, Mr. Hoptaz, Sebastian Reuter, Henriette Marie Jean Glickstein, Mihika Sharma, Neftoli Mann, Dennis Gemaev, Luigi Crispino, Jeffrey Carrier, Mohammed Ahmed, JJR AMV, Elian B, Ohao Ming, 3D Monkey Biz, Ariaman Munish, Arlen, Suki Violet Su, The 22 Design, Joel Rieger, Adrian Desilet, Derek Schultz, Marie Sekendorf, Estudi Image, Matus Jedrzejewski, Blue Hamel, Mark Reagan, Joshua Akoi, Punxacornim Siri, Webb, Kong Idiot, Maddie DeGualdre, Cho Yun Jun, NZE, IMN, Golfino666, Ali Esser, Leandro Marimon, May, Baugasm, Shane, Perry Cooper, Hannah Kazeka, Oisin O'Brien, Joel Taylor, Fo Major, Kevin E. Quintero, Jeremy Bajana, Christina, Yatsu, Raquel Vela, Ezekiel Grand, Alex Jin Young Cho, Mateo Sarkozy, Onor Koroglu, Takeuki Chiba, Pablo Ritter, Sophia Wilton, David Hughes, Riverstar 2190, LSD Honey, Mons of Canada, Alice Eternus, Hugo Esconde, Ozan Shahin, Kudo.es, The Rusted Pixel, Alexandra Olduck, Adar Shnegi, Ali, Soonba, Alessandro Lori, Nick, and everybody else on the list. Thank you so much. I love you. Have a great day. Peace.